from Hollywood and beautiful Santa Monica by the Sea, home of America's premier comedy showcase, it's A&E, an evening at the Improv. Tonight, starring Nancy Wilson. And featuring the comedy of Mark Maron, Jan Karam, Jerry Bednoff, Steve Strovan, and special guest, Warren Thomas. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Deja vu, I tell you. This is just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please, <laughs> welcome once again to the liveliest, funniest, most fascinating, fastest paced, and most entertaining hour on television. No, it's not the videotapes of Rodney Dangerfield's last physical exam. It's A&E's An Evening at the Improv. And I, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I am, of course, as always, your dedicated and very, very diligent host, Bud, Mr. M.C. Friedman, reminding you that classes to the Bud Friedman U2 can be a real TV comedy show host academy are filling up, so make your reservations now before you get shut out. Before we uh, bring out our five wonderfully talented, funny stand-up comedians, please allow me to introduce my co-hostess for the evening. She's an internationally acclaimed singing star with over 50 albums to her credit. A Grammy Award winner, she has performed all over the world with some of the greatest names in music. Please put your hands together and welcome a unique talent, the beautiful Miss Nancy Wilson. Yeah. Thank you so very much. And I have to tell you, it's really, it's great to be back in California. I've been, I've been doing so much traveling lately. I've been going all over the world, seeing interesting places, meeting exciting people, eating fabulous food. Well, who needs it? No, really. No, I really long for the golden sunshine, the good friends, and the home cooking right here in California. <laughs> Where else can we get what we have here? Crime? small traffic <laughs> i mean this is genuine insanity and we only have the very finest we've got more alternative lifestyles here than an episode of general hospital <laughs> has anyone tried channeling yet you know where you go into this trance and you start mumbling on and on and saying all kinds of strange nonsense and then denying that you said it <laughs> sort of like being a politician <laughs> no I, I tried channeling once all i got was hbo <laughs> but listen, California style and Santa is contagious. It's spreading. The whole world is going nuts. And it all started right here. And of course, let's not forget our very own California earthquake. Nobody can move the earth the way we can. <laughs> now, I was in Japan performing concerts all over the country, and I was in an actual Japanese earthquake. It wasn't very big, nothing to write home about, sort of like a date in the back seat of a Suzuki. <laughs> Now, I was there with my sister-in-law, we were watching what I call Samurai TV, which is this ultra-violent, ultra-stupid, almost pornographic junk they put on, just like American TV. <laughs> the Japanese seem to love it, but most Americans find it's hysterical. So we were watching one of these movies, and I'm talking about Eastern philosophy. I was explaining to my sister-in-law about Zen and Buddhism and metaphysics and how you can use the power of your mind to make things happen. And just then, this massive earthquake went rumbling through Tokyo. Well, I want you to know, I took credit for it. And my sister-in-law has treated me with the utmost respect ever since. <laughs> oh, but I'm, I'm so excited to be here tonight. I always love performing live because it's sort of dangerous. You know, anything can happen. Now, years ago, I was playing the Apollo Theater in New York, seven months pregnant. Yes, I was there with Cannonball Adderley and his brother Nat, the band. We were doing our big hit, Save Your Love For Me. Now, there's this part in the song at the bridge that says, I can feel it. 
Well, at that time, my baby Casey shifted. Yes, indeed, was jogging inside me, just moved the whole dress and everything over to the side, literally kicked Nat Adderley in the side. Mm -hmm. The audience was hysterical, the band was hysterical, and just as I was getting myself together, kind of getting composed, I sang the next line, which was, can't conceal it. <laughs> well, the baby started running laps again, and everybody, it was, I tell you, it was really embarrassing. But unless something truly miraculous is going on, that will not happen here tonight. <laughs> Let's move on to our first comedian of the night, originally from Boston, and soon to be seen on Caroline's Comedy Hour, he has an offbeat style of comedy. This is his first national TV appearance. So let's make him feel welcome. Here is Mark Maron. <laughs> Mark Maron. How you doing, folks? All right? Let's start a revolution. What do you think? That never happens in this country. All I know is last year, a million students rebelled in China, 650,000 people in Romania, a half a million in East Germany. I'm thinking to myself, you couldn't get a half a million Americans together unless it was a really good rock and roll show. The second coming of Christ, or they were giving away beer. I mean, if I came up to you and I said, come, we must go to the center of town. Fight for freedom, democracy, and our rights. Be like, what, tonight? <laughs> uh, we rented Batman. Um, you guys gonna be hanging out tomorrow? I'll come down with the cooler, some tunes. It'll be good. I mean, what's an American Revolution when the bank machine breaks down? <laughs> actually, actually, an American Revolution is more like four guys wearing tie-dyed shirts and one girl with a guitar holding hands in front of a nuclear power plant. <laughs> yeah, that'll help. <laughs> It's so like, hey, anyone got a hacky? <laughs> Whoa, we're really solving problems now, huh? <laughs> Isn't it exciting to live in a country where a politically charged question is, would you like paper or plastic bags today? <laughs> Don't you think that calling George Bush the environmental president is kind of like saying, well, you know, Hitler was a vegetarian. <laughs> But I'm happy to hear, from what I understand, they're going to do the election system a little differently in 1992 to avoid the mishap we had a couple of years ago. They're actually adding a presidential candidate category onto Star Search, which I think <laughs> is about as fair as the way it's been going up to this point. Another thing I just read, did you read this? The Right to Life people, the Operation Rescue people, the people that torment pregnant women across the country have decided that the moment of conception is not when the sperm hits the ovum, but it's actually when the guy goes, God, I want to do her. <laughs> along, the, uh, along the same lines, I was watching television last night, and I saw one of these commercials for early pregnancy testing, which cracked me up. I mean, because you know the one where you see the woman standing in a bathroom, sort of glowing maternally, with her husband standing behind her going, what's it say, honey? She goes, well, we got to wait three minutes. If it turns blue, I'm not pregnant. If it turns pink, I am. They come back three minutes later. She goes, we're in the pink. And the idiot goes, a baby? <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. If they really wanted to focus on their market group, what you'd see in that bathroom is this panicky teenage girl <laughs> sort of fumbling over this thing with her boyfriend standing behind her going, what's it say, babe? I can't wait forever. <laughs> She'd be like, well, we gotta wait three minutes. If it turns blue, I'm not pregnant. If it turns pink, we're in big trouble. Do you understand? <laughs> they cut back three minutes later. The guy'd be like, close call, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. Haven't you guys been through this? Haven't you ever heard yourself saying to your girlfriend, how late are you? How late are you? How late are you? <laughs> I mean, I've actually been so excited. I wanted to send out announcements for my girlfriend's menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mark and Kimberly are proud to announce the arrival of <laughs> two weeks late, but we're having a party. <laughs> Get a little cake that says it's an egg. You know? <laughs> 
But that's, I don't think that's really the kind of suspense you need in this day and age. If you're single, I think you should really be protecting yourself, taking care of yourself. But uh, because actually they just found out, I just heard this recently, there's another age-related syndrome, and you can have it if you've only been with three different people in your life. It's called APC, AIDS Paranoia Complex. <laughs> I mean, I can't even get a cold anymore without going, oh, I got it, damn. <laughs> Must have been that anemic-looking girl three years ago. She said she was a dancer. I'm such a jerk. <laughs> you get a sniffle, and you get a subconscious slideshow of everyone you ever slept with. <laughs> Maybe it was her. <laughs> Maybe it was her. <laughs> hey, how'd he get in there? <laughs> Well, I, I did, I flew out here yesterday, and I really have a problem with flying because they seem to go down every other month, and uh, if they crash, you can die, which isn't good. Uh, but the amazing thing to me about the last major airplane crash was 80 people were killed, 70 survived, and out of the survivors, 50 went on to catch connecting flights. I mean, I'm thinking, all right, wait a minute. You're sitting on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just great. <laughs> Jesus, I sure hope they get those gas fires out. I got a plane to catch. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine the flight representative in the terminal? <laughs> For those of you who weren't charred to death or severely burned, <laughs> we have a flight leaving out of gate seven. For those of you who lost loved ones or traveling companions, they're on carousel six in the baggage claim area. Please bring your dental records for identification and pick up. What? What? Oh, but the thing is, you know there'd be some guy standing at the ticket counter with charred hair. Hey, do I get frequent flyer points for this or what? Well, this will grow back. They're dead. I missed my meeting. Can you help me? <laughs> and then what do they always look for when a plane goes down? The black box, right? The tape recording of the pilot's last words. <laughs> what universal mystery <laughs> do they think they're going to decode with this information? I mean, what do they think they're going to hear? <laughs> hey, 20 bucks says you can't pull this thing down, you know? <laughs> Actually, now it would be more like... Oh, I'm so drunk. <laughs> hey, is that a cop behind us? <laughs> hey, hey, keep your beer down, man. Keep your beer down. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Marin. You've been a great crowd. Now you stay tuned because we're going to be right back with more great comedy from the improv right after this. Yeah. The Innies and Evening at the Improv will be right back. I told you we'd be right back. appeared on HBO's Young Comedians, The Tonight Show, and Improvs Around the Country. She's a bright young comedian. Jan Karam! Yeah, all right. Oh, okay. All righty. Okay. Now I have to start. I'm going to start in the middle of a sentence. Let's see. So I'm flying here, right? <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> I hate that beginning. But I like to fly, but uh, I don't like to pay for it. I don't think you should have to. They're going that way anyway. They could just give you a ride. <laughs> they make such a big deal out of it. So you get to L.A., right? It's like, hey, welcome to Los Angeles population 
seven million parking for three people. <laughs> and the thing is, is it's, there's not, it's not that there's not enough space, there's plenty of space, it's just, it's so parental, there's too many rules. You can't park here. Why? Because I said so. All you can do is drive by stores going, wow, how did those people get in there? <laughs> Somebody must have dropped them off. And then you go to a restaurant, you try to go to a restaurant, that stupid valet guy, I'm sorry, miss, you cannot eat here unless you valet park your car. <laughs> Who is that guy? It's one guy, he works all over town. The same guy. I hate that guy. So I'm cross-training today. I, I don't know what cross-training is, but I have the shoes. That's all I know. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I just want shoes, and the sales guy makes such a big deal out of it. Like, you're a professional athlete. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, before we go any further, what exactly are you going to be using these shoes for? Well, I don't know. Go on to other stores. That's about it. <laughs> I'm not going to cross-train, that's for sure. They have really stupid people in these stores that work, like, in these department stores, like those, some of those sales girls. No matter what you try on, they say the same thing. Those look really good. You should get them. <laughs> I have five on layaway. <laughs> and my girlfriend's trying on a bathing suit, right? She comes out of the dressing room and looks at herself in the mirror. Oh, God, I look so terrible. And the sales girl said, oh. <laughs> the sales girl says, well, keep in mind the fluorescent lighting in here. It's really unflattering. Like the sun's going to be dimmer. Is that dumb? That's like the kind of girl that my brother likes. He likes the kind of, you know, the kind of girl like that. So who stands like this? Like, who, who, who stands like that? <laughs> and she has that hair, you know, they always have that hair like, oh, look what happened. Oh, my hair. Oh, oh it just happened to fall in front of my face. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so he wants me to meet this girl, right? His new girlfriend of the week. And so we go out and uh, the whole time she's going, Where's my salad? Jimmy. Where's my salad? We're not even in a restaurant. But he didn't know it either. He's going, yeah, where's her salad? I want service. Ballet? He just wants an object, girl, you know, that's all. Someone to enhance his appearance. He doesn't care about brains. He just wants an accessory. I even heard his friend complimenting him. He said, hey, I saw you with Deborah the other day. She looks really good with your car. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> and my dad, well, he's no genius either. I grew up in Manhattan, and we didn't have very much money. Uh, he owned a lawnmower repair shop on 14th Street. <laughs> my own New York joke. <laughs> So I, I used to teach aerobics um, in uh, New York on the Upper East Side, right by Bloomingdale's. So all these women come and stand in the back of the class complaining the whole time, going, well, I don't have to do all the exercises. <laughs> the most important thing is that I showed up today. <laughs> Besides, I don't like the way that girl does the sit-ups. It hurts my stomach. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. I bought two dresses. I had to carry them to the car. And they always go, went to Greenblatt's last night, ordered the chicken salad. It wasn't good. <laughs> Just that, huh? Just that. And if you work out in a regular health club, there's always those big weightlifter guys. What's the deal with them? They always wear pastels. It's like the bigger the guy, the lighter the shade. You always see a big, huge weightlifter wearing a little tiny baby pink tank top. It's like he's thinking, well, I'm so masculine, I gotta balance this shit out. <laughs> you better give me a pair of those lace socks. <laughs> and they, they see some girl working out, they're just astounded. Ooh, a girl working out. Ooh, uh. They always come and walk over to you. Excuse me. I was, uh checking you out over there for quite some time. Let me ask you something. 
Where did you learn how to do all those exercises? Oh, you're going to go, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my boyfriend was a weightlifter, and I look at pictures in magazines and stuff, but I could never learn on my own. I'm a girl. I'm too stupid. <laughs> I don't even know how I got here. <laughs> Will you buy me something? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh-uh, don't touch that dial.